Well, hello everybody. My name is Jens Kruger and it's a pleasure for me to talk about uh, the new bridge that we came up with. And uh, before I talk about the bridge, I just want to talk about bridges in general just a little bit. Um, for those of you who have been, been playing banjo for a long time, just like myself, we're very picky about our bridges uh, because out of two reasons. One, we get used to the sound of a bridge and how the banjo behaves with a certain bridge on it. And uh, if we put a new bridge on, it's always a little difficult to get used to the, to the new bridge. Uh, secondly, an, a, a bridge actually plays in uh, over time. Uh, that means that all the little fibers in the wood actually do, 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 the, do the amounts of vibrations that the bridge is actually going through. They break a little bit and the bridge becomes just a little bit more... Uh, natural sounding the, the highs just become a little less and everything becomes a little rounder and and warmer sounding so when we put a new bridge on sometimes you have it has, it has a tendency of becoming a little harsh or a little bright or just not as even as the old one that we had on so that's why we a lot of times just go back to the old one now the wood has also plays a very important role in in the banjo there's um, if the wood is really hard, that's really good because the wood need the the bridge needs to rock, and I'm going to explain how that's actually going to work a little bit. The, the, the bridge is rock, and if it's if the wood is too uh, if the wood is too soft, the material rocks in itself and absorbs energy instead of really putting it onto the banjo head, which gives a little bit of a of a weird sound. Now, if we would just take the hardest wood that we could get, uh, that would also make the the wood most likely very heavy and that also would increase uh, um, in the absorption of uh, vibrations not in actually transferring so we need a light wood that's very hard so in order for that we get the wood from uh, uh, a Canadian company and there's a few different ways of drying wood there's two kinds of kilns one is the steam kiln and one is the vacuum kiln they're both kiln dried the steam kiln, now you heat up the wood in order to get the uh, water uh, out of the wood. and But in that process of heating up the wood through, with steam, you also destroy some of the cellular structure of the wood, which is not really in the favor of tone. Now, uh, violin builders, they know that they want their wood air-dried. And now, air-dried wood for a proper uh, dryness can take many years. Uh, so a German engineer in the 19, in the early, uh, uh, in the early 20th century, in 1915, I believe, came up with a with a, a system called vacuum uh, uh, drying. And so the wood is put put on the vacuum, and it, it sucks actually the the moisture out without destroying the cellular structure of the wood, which is almost identical to air dried wood. And this is what we what we use in all our banjos, by the way. So, so that's that's what we have. Now for the bridge, the new bridge is called Smiley Bridge. And uh, now, why is it called Smiley Bridge? I uh, Greg came up with that name because it's got a curve on the uh, in the in the bottom of the bridge. Now, when you look at a banjo head, and when you look at the banjo head, it's it's flexible. It's a drum, so it's it's actually it it it's like a bathtub it sort of you know stretches in with the pressure of the strings the the bridge presses in now if a bridge gets old and you have seen that on on many banjos the bridge starts looking somewhat like this uh, it sort of curves on top and that's because the bridge wants to be in the curvature of the head and at one point i just thought well why don't we just make a bridge that has this curve built in so the bridge doesn't sink in over time? Now, the advantage over that is also that once this curve is in, that means that the whole wood is actually relaxed. Now, I made a little drawing when you, when you, when you look at a bridge that's on the head, the pressure points on the bridge to the head on a bridge that's straight underneath is here and here. And in the middle, there's not that much pressure. So all the pressure 
of the string pull pushes the bridge down and that makes it that makes it sag like this if a string on a banjo gets plucked the string moves and moves the bridge and then the bridge sort of rocks on the head which amplifies the sound of the string so the bridge actually if in, in if i would show it like that the bridge moves like that like it, like that and it rocks like that now if the pressure points of the bridge are out here the distance here is shorter that means this is a lot stiffer here than coming from than the than from the inside if a bridge would stand on the inside foot the pressure is not as strong here it's stronger in the middle and because it's in the middle it can easier rock and transfer the sound easier to the banjo head which results in a nicer spectrum of overtones which is not sounding so cramped so older bridges that always curve a little bit they do that and that's why most banjo players like a bridge that's actually played in but they're always a little bit on the curvy side and there was there was a there was a you know all a banjo players came up with all kinds of you know quick fixes for that you know actually bill keith once said that he put a string around the the bridge and tightened the string and then to sort of force the bridge back into place well if you're using a fishman a fishman you know or some kind of you know pickup that requires a little metal plate that is stuck underneath the middle foot but that's very very little that wouldn't make much difference so there's also people who actually stuck you know wood underneath the middle foot but the problem is that it's not round the banjo head is round so in order to release all the stress uh, we want it to be we want it to be round so of course banjo heads have different tightnesses and this first edition of the of, of the bridge is made for a banjo head tightness between G and B flat roughly depends also on the string gauges but pretty much between G and, and B flat you can use this bridge when it gets lower you decrease the pressure a little bit but it still will be very good so so I can show you uh, when I put this bridge on So the, the bridge sounds instantly even and because there's no pressure inside of the bridge it is almost it is already like a played in bridge it will still take a while for all the little bridge for all the wood fibers to break completely but this bridge will not warp and will stay the same and will stay healthy for a long long time and that's why i'm so happy about this bridge because it really works wonderful and it sounds fantastic so give it a try <laughs> 